what you would do tonight, that your spirit would breathe like the new, refreshing wind, that you would do something new in this place, God, that you would sit among us, that you would speak to us, that you would teach us, that we would be moldable in your hands, that you would give us a vision of your future and your plans even if our minds can't comprehend it, God, that we would trust you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this. Amen. And now if you've got kids, if you would head to the back of the room towards the doors, all the kiddos. The rest of you guys can have a seat. You find one. Good morning. Good evening. Um, I want to ask you a question tonight. I'm gonna have to get used to doing that when I'm like speaking and stuff, you know. Like tonight, tonight. How many of you are happy to be here tonight? Me too. God's doing an awesome thing at Celebration. This uh, picture of a waterfall I've had since, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a, I guess it's a waterfall, wave, crashing. I've had that vision in my head since way before in current. I say way before, like maybe two or three years before that. We had a prayer meeting. I showed up on a Monday night at church to pray with a group of other people. And I remember the Lord speaking that to me. And something that I think we don't understand or don't, we don't allow ourselves to walk in as much as we need to is patience. And when God gives you a vision of something, no matter what it is, if God gives it, he will perform it. Um, the problem so many times is that we're not willing to wait it out. But there's such a blessing and there's such a uh, reward when we yield passage to the inward flowing current. And we let God have his way and we remain faithful even when things get difficult. So this morning, ah, I'm going to get it. This evening, I want to talk to you about this. How many of you have prayed for patience before? That's good. I should say I'm surprised, I guess. Um. Sometimes when we think about praying for patience, I'm collecting my thoughts because my thoughts are a little, like, I go from, like, singing, you know, I'm on one plane, and then i got to enter into another plane, like the spirit realm, then you're back into, the, like, the mental realm, so bear with me as I'm a little slow, okay? Let me read from Hebrews chapter 10. This will help me get going. It's verse 32 through 36. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there with me. This is going to be kind of our... Um, we have a primary text, which, I, you know me, I like to jump around a little bit. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. Recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property, since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one. Now, first of all, reading that scripture, I doubt that most of us can really identify with that. So we're actually starting out on something where we're going to have to sort of mentally enter into what would it be like if I willingly and joyfully accepted the plundering of my property? That's where I got to get to first before I understand this, which he says in verse 35, therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. They joyfully accepted the plundering of their property because they knew that what they had to wait on, what they were hoping for was a better and a lasting possession. In verse 36, for you have need of patience so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. You have need of patience. So what does our life look like? What does your life look like? And maybe you just take a little bit of time to think about this. What does your life look like when there is no patience? Just think about that. What does your life look like when there's no patience? You have zero. Gone. No patience. What do you look like? Imagine that, okay? Some of you are like, nah. Nah, man. Nah, I don't want to imagine that. That's not good. It's not healthy. When we have no patience, okay? I want you to see that because we're going to revisit this at the very end. But I, wanna, I want you to think about that. What does it look like when you have no patience? What does it look like when I have no patience? Because that's going to show us really why we need it so much. If you don't know what it looks like when you have no patience, how are you going to feel the gravity and the weight of your desperate need for it? Patience is, and I thought through some analogies of what, what is patience like? To me, patience is like, like a life raft. The water is not going to change. It's, it could be turbulent, but it's, it's water, right? If you don't have a life raft, where are you going to end up? Blub, blub. In trouble. Patience, again, here is like night vision goggles. I don't like this vision. I like this um, thought. You, you can't change the fact that there's darkness all around, can you? But when you got the ability to see and to perceive the way that you can map out your strategy, it gives you an, an, an advantage to be able to plan and to see and to take time to gather yourself together. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 24. And you guys are familiar with this passage. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And remember last week we talked about being immersed in the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be immersed in God Himself? Only Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit, right? So we can baptize in water. We can lead you and, and show you the way to Jesus. But it's only Him, He Himself that can, that can immerse us and baptize in the Holy Spirit. And so if we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, if we have the Holy Spirit, if we're full of the Holy Spirit, this is the fruit. Okay, so everything we read here is one part of a representation of, of a person who's full of Him. Okay? So let's read this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He says, against such things there is no law. There's no, no, nobody's going to invent anything that says, oh, you know what, we're going to outlaw patience. We're going to outlaw kindness. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna outlaw gentleness. You can't be gentle anymore. No one's going to say a law against those, those things. Because why? Because they're inherently good. So if this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and one expression of it is patience. Then when I express patience, I'm, I'm exhibiting at that moment an aspect of the Holy Spirit working in me. So this is where that waterfall picture kind of comes in because I see this 
as a waterfall. You got love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And they all flow into one another. There's nothing that's separated, right? We tend to compartmentalize and separate everything out, but this is all one thing. It's a one spirit. The living water, right? Flowing. So you got love, flows into joy, peace, patience. See how that works? So you start with this, you start with the love of God that enters into our hearts. Remember, we love God because He what? He first loved us. There's no, there's no love that naturally starts on my own. So God loves me. I feel, I understand His joy, the joy that was set before Him, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that guarded Him on His way to the cross, the patient endurance that He felt, the kindness in leading us to repentance. All of these things, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that, that God begins to implant upon my heart, the things that flow and begin to flow together. One expression of the same Spirit. And I see patience here in the middle as this kind of... Um, it's, it stands out to me. I think love, joy, and peace, we tend to almost like it's out there somewhere, something that we think about God, and, and it's, it's kind of like a, a positive... Um, you know, those are great thoughts, right? Patience kind of almost hits us between the eyes because when I say the word patience, almost undoubtedly there is a person that comes to mind. When, we, when, when, when I say the word patience, who comes to mind? Who comes to your mind? Who are you losing patience with? Who really tests your patience, you know? If you, got, if you have children. I love children. I love children. I love my son. And there are times when I, I tend to be tested in my patience. Amen? Parents, you know what I'm talking about? And we tend to be tested in, in ways that we don't necessarily like to see ourselves as parents when we're tested in our patience with our children. Or with our spouse, for instance. But patience is this thing, I think, right in the middle there where everything hinges and and really where Christian maturity is most evident. Okay? Think about that. If you lack patience, that's a very, very clear sign that you are not walking in maturity. That's just plain and simple. It's very, very, it's, it's outward. It's very public. If you don't have patience, it becomes pretty evident pretty quickly to others. And there's this relationship here between patience and integrity. What is integrity? You know what integrity is. We tend to think of integrity in terms of moral things, like a person who's honest or a person who, uh, you know, is uh, somebody who's, who's pure in their heart. The word integrity means cohesion. It means unity. It means um, strength, solidarity. Things are together. Togetherness. Integrity has to do with inward, internal strength. That when it gets tested, when it gets pushed, it remains the same. When it gets pulled, when it gets torn, it remains the same. Okay? So when you think of integrity, you need to think, when you think of patience, you need to think of integrity almost in the same breath. They're very, they're very related. That, that if we're going to have patience, we really need to have that inward, internal integrity. Um, patience is faith over time. I'm trusting and I'm believing in God over a period of time. We, have, we need to have patience for things to grow, right? Like, um, my wife and I used to get, we used to buy, uh, I don't know if you need to EQ my voice, but I'm getting like a low hum every so often. Low end. Okay. Um, we, we used to eat grapefruit and love it. We'd get the organic kind. We can't find it anymore. I don't know if they stopped selling organic grapefruit, but it was like so delicious and we loved it. And I even contemplated at one point, like, I would love to plant a grapefruit tree. Wouldn't that be so cool? Like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to plant a grapefruit tree. I had that thought. I went online. I actually looked this up. I spent a little bit of time actually thinking about it. And something I realized, though, that I was going to have to wait several years before I could actually enjoy any fruit. Like, you have to wait seasons, even after the tree is fully mature, you have to wait seasons for the, after the fruit, bear, it bears fruit. The first year's fruit is not really that good. And neither really is the second year. You almost have to wait until the third year to have any kind of fruit. So, we need to, that, that, that showed me how much patience I needed to have if I was going to yield, if I was going to enjoy the yield of a, of a tree, a simple tree. And so think about this. How patient is God with you to wait till you grow 
and you reach maturity in your faith that at some point you begin to bear fruit and even the first year's fruit's pretty bad. And so he's got to wait for like the second year, the third year. How, many, how, many, how much does he, he wait because he so longs for and draws from the fruit of his people? The sweetness, right? The, the, the wonderful beauty that, that, that God is looking for, he is so patient to wait for. But are you patient with yourself? Are you patient with your spouse? Are you patient with your friends? Are you patient with your children? Are you patient with those you work with? I want you to really think about this. This is the most important thing, in my opinion. One of the biggest evidences of Christian immaturity is a lack of patience. And there is so much lack of patience in this country, in this world. We want things quickly. We want them now. 